2016 marks the 10 year anniversary for the Dead Rising franchise. 10 years of zombie slaying, 10 years of solving cases, and 10 years of... this shit. Capcom celebrates with a new movie, a new game, and of course, porting the first three games to current generation platforms. Dead Rising 2 and off the record hitting PlayStation 4 and Xbox One is nice, but those games are already multi-platform from the get-go. Dead Rising 1, however, started as an Xbox 360 exclusive and never received a port to any other console. It's quite a shame because its unique mechanics and satisfying gameplay make it a generation-defining title. Years pass and the Dead Rising series continues to stride, but Capcom really didn't show any interest in porting the first game to other platforms. Now one might say that Microsoft co-owns the first game, therefore won't be seeing any sort of PlayStation or Steam release. Well, first of all, I really doubt that. After all, Microsoft didn't have a problem with Dead Rising 3 being ported to Steam. Even if that were true, it made me hope Dead Rising would be one of the first games to get the backward compatibility treatment for Xbox One. Obviously, this was not the case. It now makes sense why none of the Xbox 360 titles became backwards compatible. Capcom wanted to sell the games all over again. A trophy list was leaked during the summer of 2016. Capcom then promptly announced Dead Rising 1 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. It also appears the games are being ported in-house. Look at that! 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second. A first for Dead Rising 1, and also a first for my channel. This is going just swell. Dead Rising 2 and Off the Record would be ported to the 8th generation consoles as well. No new PC version though, since the original versions are still available for purchase through Steam and can be played in said presentation. Well, if your computer can handle it. Dead Rising 1 and 2 would also be released as physical copies on PS4 and Xbox One. But not off the record, because... Anyone who's been paying attention to how the 8th generation of consoles is going knows that there's an abundance of ports and remasters. The concept became a real trend halfway through the 7th generation and only gained traction during the 8th. There's a variety of how these ports slash remasters slash whatevers go, but the most frequent fall under three different categories. One, the port is perfect, or is at least functional, and contributes to the reach of the game by becoming easily attainable because the original version is only available in physical copies or exclusive to a particular console, and the only original copies in existence are being sold online at scalped prices. The porting team also took the liberty to make the game look or even play better than the original version. 2. The port is at least playable, but doesn't appear to improve on the experience in any way, ultimately feeling unnecessary. They tend to be overpriced ports and collections that exist for the sole purpose of marketing or increasing the longevity of the franchise. They feel like the game was released at the same time for both the 7th and 8th generation of consoles, rather than remasters. In other words, you're playing the exact same game, but the company simply took small advantage of a more powerful console. 3. The port is actually a complete mess riddled with glitches or possibly missing content. Despite whether or not it was to make rare or scalped games more available to players, it shouldn't have been released in the form that it did. All it does is make the overall series appear worse to people who are experiencing it for the first time. Capcom has been part of this bandwagon for a while, but has focused more on this since late 2014 with the HD port of the Resident Evil remake and later Resident Evil Zero. Once only exclusive to GameCube and Wii, these games would then launch on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. These new versions would also see new options such as widescreen resolution, alternate controls, brand new costumes for the protagonist that you could purchase as downloadable content, and an original extra campaign for Resident Evil Zero became available on top of that. Along with that, Capcom ported DMC, Devil May Cry, and scaled up the resolution and raised the average frames per second, provided additional difficulties, and included an option to increase the game by 20%. A pleasant surprise. The 8th generation remaster of Devil May Cry 4 was later released and was sold as a special edition on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Virgil, Trish, and Lady would be added as playable characters, and the PC exclusive features such as 20% speed increase option were included for the console versions. But why am I bringing all this up? I just want everybody to be on the same page when I say Capcom set the bar pretty high when it comes to remasters and ports. So how did the Dead Rising games turn out? I will be mainly focusing on the first game's port since that seems to be what people were interested in more than anything else. But I will devote some time to Dead Rising 2 and off the record on PlayStation 4 afterward. I managed to get the full Dead Rising 1 experience for both the PlayStation 4 and PC. The thing I noticed immediately? The box! Yeah, people like nice box art, right? 
to my surprise, it actually looks almost exactly like the original box art for Xbox 360. They didn't throw on some bullshit now in 1080p or remastered text on the front and thankfully didn't tart up the cover or even the back with quotes from blowhard reviewers praising this game. Instead, they kept it to the point just like the original box. Seeing the boxes for other ports, remasters, or even Ultimate Editions made me glad that Capcom decided not to fuck up the original art in any way, shape, or form. The original game was presented at 720p resolution, but this remaster raised it to 1080p, expanding our view of the entire game. Well, if you're not one of those weirdos that use 1080i, I mean, come on, what the hell is that? The frame rate on the PC version never dips for even a moment, always at a constant 60. It drops every once in a while on PS4, but only briefly and it's pretty rare. Loading times are ridiculously fast no matter which area you go to, it's almost non-existent. The time it takes to save your game is also much shorter, it's near instant on PC when you don't include Frank's animation. The PC version also lets you map buttons to whatever you wish. Sadly, but expectedly, this is missing from the console versions of the remaster, as well as graphic options such as removing the motion blur effect. One actual fault I notice is the music seems to have looping issues. The tracks cut abruptly when they finish and simply restart, rather than fade back to the beginning of the song like the original game. Something that may be patched, but it's barely worth mentioning in the first place. While the variety of options have been improved, the textures and models would see no noticeable changes. Unlike the Resident Evil HD remasters, Dead Rising's textures were left untouched. So if you have a decent setup, on PC we're looking at 10 year old textures and models on a crystal clear 1080p resolution through a current monitor. You start to notice faults in the world itself, like how the ears on the characters don't really look like ears, they look like pictures of ears where their actual ears should be. Still, there's room to appreciate how impressive this was all back in 2006. The artistry holds up well and still makes this a pleasant, atmospheric experience. It also draws the eye away from the dated textures and models to the point where you don't really think about it when you're enthralled in the adventure that is Dead Rising. Speaking of things untouched, if you didn't already hear, no, the AI was not changed in the slightest. They still stop following you at random times, they still refuse to repel zombos by themselves when grabbed, they still get easily distracted, they still take damage like infants, and they still make you want to rip your hair out when you're trying to escort them back to the safe house. A lot of people complained about the fact that the dated AI was not improved in the slightest, but Capcom clearly didn't want to alter the game in any way, possibly for the sake of entitled Dead Rising fans such as myself. I personally wouldn't have complained a whole lot if they did tweak the AI even a tad, since they are really frustrating to deal with. But they do provide a serious sense of satisfaction when you manage to guide them safely to the security room. Making the overall task significantly easier can actually take something away from the experience. But this is more of a sentimental statement, and if they did end up improving the AI, that wouldn't really knock points off of this port. Regardless, it's an integral part of the game, just like the mass amount of objects you can use as weapons, the level up system, special moves, hordes of zombies on screen, and psychopaths, the experience of helping the stragglers help make the Dead Rising experience so unique and memorable. So what is there left to say about the Dead Rising port? It's fine. Seriously, that's what it boils down to. The port is fine. It isn't broken, it doesn't take any ridiculous liberties to attempt changing the experience, and it isn't unnecessary. It's literally fine in just about every single way. And that's all I really wanted. A fine port. My experience with Dead Rising 2 on PlayStation 4 was unfortunately less enjoyable. The very first thing I, and everyone else, noticed was the initial loading time. It's different whenever you start the game. Sometimes it's 20 to 30 seconds, other times it's 3 to 5 minutes. What is this, a Naughty Dog game? Well, that's not a fair comparison. They do it so the loading is minimal to non-existent during their actual game. But this was just a bug. Online felt very inconsistent to the point where fighting bosses were a complete crapshoot. Randomly standing still or teleporting all over the place, and Terror is Reality multiplayer wouldn't stop skipping when it came to opponents' animations. Compared to how online multiplayer was on PlayStation 3, it just doesn't feel nearly as stable. Also, playing a 6 hour session with Souls lore expert Fungo, his game crashed 3 times. Specifically when a random new scenario began. This never happened in the original version. Particular audio issues also existed, such as certain dialogue only coming out of one speaker. Loading screens, while still better than the original version, last much longer than in the Dead Rising 1 port. That includes the PlayStation 4 version. Frame drops are more frequent as well. These same issues can also be found in Off the Record, which isn't a big surprise since, you know, 
it's the same game. Otherwise, the experience is fair enough. It isn't quite the top tier port like Dead Rising 1, but at least meets certain standards and isn't an unplayable mess. I hope they eventually patch out particular issues. At least the port of Dead Rising 1 was near perfect. In all honesty, I cared about that turning out fine much more than the ports of the other two games. My lowered sense of enjoyment from the Dead Rising 2 port really got me to thinking, why don't I like this game as much as the first? A lot of it comes from how Capcom Vancouver designed Dead Rising 2. The gameplay's slower pace and even the camera being positioned so close to your character really takes something away from the experience. You just don't feel like such a small part of an overrun world. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good game, but I feel like a lot of its first title charm was lost. This wasn't only because of Frank's absence, it's just that the gameplay doesn't feel as enjoyable. They did manage to make bosses tougher, so that's a big plus. If you're considering reliving the Dead Rising experience with the upgraded frame rate and resolution, get your hands on it. It'll remind you why you loved the game so much in the first place. As for Dead Rising 2 and off the record, I say wait for the games to get patched up, which will hopefully be sooner than later. Thanks for watching.